Are you constantly worried that you forgot to pause your maxed fabric capacity and now it is generating unnecessary costs? After watching this video you no longer have to worry about that, since I will show you a beginner friendly way to automatically pause your capacity. Stay tuned! Welcome to the video, my name is Alexia and on this channel I cover maxed fabric and Azure related topics. In this video I'm going to show you how you can create a very simple solution to automatically pause your fabric capacity using an Azure Data Factory pipeline. I am using Mast Fabric almost every day and most of that time in my own environment where I have a certain budget for each month that is less than $200, which means that I can't even run the smallest fabric capacity there for the whole month and that's why I am only keeping it running when I need it. I used to be very worried that maybe I will forget to pause the capacity after I'm done using it, and I don't like to bother my head with these kind of things that can be easily automated, and that's why I wanted to have a solution that will automatically pause my capacity every day if I forgot to turn it off. This solution can be done by using many methods that allow you to do REST API calls to Azure's Management API. In this video I'll show you one easy and simple way that I have been using that will utilize a simple Azure Data Factory pipeline for handling this task for us. Other tools that I could recommend for this would be Azure Functions and Azure Logic Apps, since those are also cheap to run if you configure them correctly. But in my opinion, Data Factory is the most simple one for beginners to use out of those three. Also, Data Factory has a pay-as-you-go pricing model, so running this solution there will only cost some pennies per month. But now, without further ado, let's open up Azure and let's check how to do this. Here I have my data factory open, where I have this pipeline that will handle pausing my capacity if I forgot to turn it off. If you are already a more experienced data factory and Azure user, and you just want this solution, and you don't need to see step by step how did I build this, you can just go to the description, where I have a link where you can find this pipeline as a template, and then you can import that template by using this import from pipeline template feature here. Then you are able to get that pipeline to your own data factory. And after that, you will need to give your data factory's managed identity contributor access to your fabric capacity to get this up and running. And then you can create a new trigger to that pipeline and schedule when you want to check if your capacity is still running and needs to be turned off. If that explanation was not good enough for you, don't worry, since now we are going to begin the step-by-step -step tutorial part of this video and build this pipeline together step-by-step. -step. And for that, let's start by setting up a new data factory and finding a data factory from the marketplace. And let's find a data factory. And let's create a new data factory here. And next we would need to name our data factory and select the region where we want to run that data factory. And to the other settings we don't need to touch. And now we can create the data factory. And now our deployment is done and we should see this new data factory in our resource group. And there we have the new data factory. So we are starting from scratch with this tutorial. And in this data factory I don't have anything yet. So we will start with this very blank data factory and start to build our pipeline. Let's create a new pipeline to this data factory. Let's call that pipeline PL pause fabric capacity. And then first thing is that we want to add a web activity to this pipeline. And with this web activity, we are going to do a get request to Azure's management API and check whether or not our fabric capacity is still running. Let's name our web activity a bit better here. So it is get fabric capacity running status. And then we're going to go to the settings tab and then we have to define the URL here. But before we do that, let's add a few parameters to this pipeline. And those parameters are going to be subscription ID, then we're going to have resource group name, then we're going to have fabric capacity name. And with these parameters we can control which capacity we are pausing if we have multiple capacities that we are controlling. And we can already set default values for these parameters for testing purposes that describe the capacity that we would like to test pausing. And all of these values can be found by going to our fabric capacity. And here we can see the subscription ID. We can copy that and add that to our subscription ID field. And then next we would need our resource group name. And the resource group name is here. We can copy that and add that to our resource group name. And then we want the capacity name that can be found here. And there we have all the parameters that we need. 
Next, let's go back to our web activity and then we are going to select the get as our API method. And then we are going to define a URL where we are doing that get request. And for that, we are going to use this expression where we use those pipeline parameters to construct that URL. And for that, we are going to use this simple concat function. And we are doing this get request to this Azure Management API that will allow us to do this management operations related to our resources. And to this API, we need to add a few things from our parameters. First, we want to add the subscription ID here, and then we want to add our resource group name, and then we want to add our capacity name. And this will then construct the URL where we are doing the API call. So it will replace these parameter values with the values that are coming from our parameters, so that we are pointing this request to our fabric capacity that we want to pause. Also, I will provide this expression in the description, so you can copy this from there. Next, we are going to select the authentication method. And for that, we are going to use system assigned managed identity. If you are unsure what is a system assigned managed identity and you would like to learn more, check out the link in the description where I have linked the video that I have made on those. But yeah, let's continue with this one. And for the resource, we want to define management.azure.com URL here. And now with this get request, we should be able to get the status of our fabric capacity. Let's try to run this using a debug and those default values that we have defined for this pipeline. And let's see what happens. And our get request failed, that was actually expected. And our error message says that we don't have authorization to perform this action. Which is actually correct, since I haven't yet given any permissions for this data factory's managed identity to do the operation that we're trying to do. So, we are going to give those permissions now. So, let's go to our fabric capacity, and then we want to select add, add role assignment, and from here, we are going to select Privilege Administrator Roles. And from there, we are going to select the Contributor Role. And then we are going to select Managed Identity. And then we are going to select Members. And then we are going to find our data factory here, to which we want to give that contributor access, so that our data factory is able to do that management operation to this fabric capacity. And then we can click OK. And then we can click Next and then we can review and assign this. And now the role assignment has been added. And now let's try to debug this once more with the same values. And now it's again running. Let's see, now it succeeded. So now we are able to get our capacity running status. And it can be found from this, this here by scrolling this through, and there is the state active, which tells that our capacity is currently running. So next, we would like to build some conditional logic based on this property here. So if it's active, then we can pause it when we are running this pipeline. But before we continue building this pipeline, I would like you to know that I spent a ton of my free time creating these videos for you. And that's why I'd like to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more Must Fabric content. It doesn't cost you anything, and I would highly appreciate that. But now, let's continue with our pipeline. After this, we want to add this if condition to our pipeline after this web activity, and utilize that status property that we had there. Let's name our if condition as if fabric capacity state is active, and then let's add just wait activities to these branches to see that everything works fine. And let's name this first activity as not active, so if the status is not active, it will go to this branch and this activity. And then let's add another wait activity here, and let's name this as active. So if our status is active, it should go to this branch, so we can test our logic out. And now we can define the expression for our if condition that should evaluate the boolean value. And for that, we are going to use this equals function. And to this equals function, we want to get the state property from the output of our web activity, and then compare if that matches to a string active. And then this will evaluate the true and go to our true branch of our if activity. And this expression can be also found in the description. 
and we can click OK. And now we can run this as a debug and see what happens and where this logic will go. And we can see that it went to the active branch, which means that our logic works. But now we want to replace this active with another web activity that will actually pause the fabric capacity if it's still running. So let's go to the true branch and let's delete this active here and let's add a web activity here. Let's name this web activity as pause fabric capacity and then we are going to select the API method and this time it's going to be a post request. And then again we have to define URL for this and we are going to use similar logic that we used previously there but this time it has this suspend here and also I'm going to provide this URL in the description as well. But yeah it, it has the similar logic than we had previously so we are just adding a bunch of parameter values here to this URL when doing the request and we can click OK. And for the authentication we want to again select the system assigned managed identity and have the same resource that we had previously that is management.azure.com. And now I can click this validate button and we can see that body is required for put and post requests. Even though this API call doesn't really require that body to be there, data factory does require that. So we can just add a random body here, for example, this kind of a reason automatic pause or something like that. It doesn't really matter what we have here because it's not really utilized when we are doing the API call. But yeah, now we should have configured everything regarding this pipeline. And now we could try to run this and let's see if we would actually be able to pause our fabric capacity that is running here. Let's click this debug and let's see what happens. And now our pipeline will start running. This will take probably a little while and I will speed things up while we wait this to complete. And now it has completed and now we run this pause fabric capacity web activity here and it succeeded fine. So now our fabric capacity has been paused as we can see here. Next let's run our pipeline again and let's see what happens if our capacity is already paused. Then this if condition will go to this not active branch and our pipeline will complete just fine. So only in the case that that capacity is on, this pipeline will try to pause it. Otherwise, if it would be already turned off and we would try to run this web activity, this would throw an error message. And also a little best practice that I want to add here is to add a few retries to both of these web activities that I have here so that they're a bit more error resilient and then I want to modify modify the timeout for these maybe we add 10 minutes per web activity as timeout since we don't need, really need 12 hours to have here and for the post request that is pausing the capacity maybe we can modify the http request timeout to be for example five minutes from the default one minute so that it has time to execute if the fabric capacity is not shutting down as expected after that we can create a trigger for our pipeline and we can select the schedule trigger and then name our trigger and have it set to our time zone. My time zone is Helsinki Finland time and then we can select the interval when we want to run it. We can for example select once a day and then maybe 11 o'clock because already then I should be done with my fabric testing. And then we can click OK and this will then ask us to provide the parameter values where we want to input the values for our capacity that we are trying to pause. And to here I have now provided the values for my fabric capacity. And if we would have another fabric capacity that we would like to pause using this same solution, we would just create a new trigger and then configure that trigger and then just add different parameter values here. And that would be paused by using that different trigger then. So we can actually utilize the same pipeline to different fabric capacities by using these parameters and triggers and then post them at the time that we want. But also remember to add contributor access to those fabric capacities to this data factory as well, otherwise it won't be able to post them. Now you should be able to automate pausing of your fabric capacity to save some money. If you'd like to learn more about fabric, check out this video next. Now I thank you for watching and see you in that video.